Hey everyone, special edition today, an in-person group text and behind the velvet rope. David, welcome to my home. I know, you and I matched the I decor. Know, and I we, was, didn't... we match each other and we match the walls. Yes, we're very on, on trend. This wasn't planned. Not at all, which is hilarious because you said that you were going to originally wear black. I was. Which is we know I always wear. I was, and I'm like, you know, it's such a New York thing to wear black, so let me just wear a different color. And it's nice out today. Yeah, we bought into the neutral store. Yes. Okay, so. We're so California. A lot, a lot, a lot to discuss. Because we started talking yesterday. Let's discuss the big news, which is the Beverly Hills reunion that's about to drop. And the hints that are coming up are in Sane, starting with Kyle. It's Kyle, the OG herself. You know, well, I mean, in the finale, she, you know, they picked cameras back up. So it yes. ended and they did that last 10 minutes. And she said, yeah, Mauricio just broke the trust. He just did something that broke the trust that I can't get over. Well, okay, so what do you, that obviously, wait, the speaker implies the listener first. So she's implying What's your first thought? Cheating. I mean, I don't know how you could think of anything but cheating. Could be money. Could be money. Could be... She had issues with Kathy last season. I mean, I don't know, something with the family. Ooh. I mean, it's going to be huge, but I feel almost like she's throwing off the set, the, the trail. Of what's really going of on, Of what's Melissa. really going on. Yeah. Because if Mauricio really did something that bad, don't do you really think he would have been on like Dancing with the Stars and pretending that this isn't going to come out because he knows by now, especially on that show, everything's eventually going to come out. Just like the Morgan thing eventually came out. Yeah, I have a feeling. I mean, Garcelle has said that at the reunion something happens and we find out something that we don't know about Kyle. I mean, so like the buildup is huge, but. I mean, let me tell you, if there's a three-part reunion and this is nothing, then aren't you upset? Well, first of all, it's a three-part reunion. So yeah. already they've expanded the format. And everyone's already weighing in. Like, Dorit suddenly jumped in and actually posted a text. Yes. Which said... She feels... So there was no problems between Dorit and Kyle all season. Right. So... The night before the reunion, you know, like, if you and I had a problem and then I'm going to face you the next day, Kyle texted her and said, like, you know, can't wait to see you tomorrow, even though we haven't talked in months, you know, and let's not bring up anything tomorrow. It wasn't really specific, but it basically implied, like, nobody knows we're really not speaking. Why would we bring that onto this national platform? So Dorit then went into Erica and it's filmed and she says, you know, I was kind of told to be silenced today by Kyle. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about the text. Like, did it really say that? It kind of did. It kind of didn't, right? If you read it, it kind of could be read any direction. It could be read, you know something, and please don't bring it up. It can also be read as, hey, let's keep our personal problems private. Right. I still love you. I can't wait to see you. In a lot of ways, that could sound like an olive branch. Kind of. Kind of. I, but we, I would send that text. You would. I would just be like, you would, I mean, I guess I would, but I would be like, we haven't talked in like how many months, and tomorrow you just, you don't want me to go there with you. Right, or I would write something along the lines of like, hey, can't wait to see you tomorrow. I know we've been going through a rough patch. I'm just hoping that we can find some time to like talk and catch up because I really love you and miss you in my life. Something, something, something like a little that. more open, but it's all, you know, feeding this. What is this big thing? And you brought up to me the other day that video of like Morgan rubbing Kyle's hip. I don't think there was as much there as everyone's making it out to be on that clip. You don't. I personally, I feel a little like everyone's. Everyone's, you know, seeing things in that particular clip that isn't there. Really? I mean, it's possible, but that hand went up and down. 
No, granted, what are you doing? You're on the watch what happens live carpet. So that's where it gets all complicated. It's like, even the tax, like, is Kyle sending a tax 13 seasons in that she doesn't think is going to be revealed? But if she and Dorit are really friends, of, by the way, and of course these people communicate off camera. Yeah. And they have conversations going on between each other all the time that aren't revealed. I mean, yes. especially Kathy and Kyle. They're all sisters. The time. You know, you, you know there's lots of go, you know, back and forth that 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 we don't see. So again, I'm very on the fence with that. I'm not I, I don't think it's right what Dorit did. Because it was clearly a personal text. However, these women are so media savvy and trained. Part of me feels like the network knew they were going to, you know, said yes, post it. I just feel like nothing on this show happens by accident because the one time it did, which was the Kyle Mauricio split, the network was scrambling. Yeah. And, like, the whole Kathy thing and the sprinter was off camera. So right. I'm sure, like, they wish that that was actually on camera because then we wouldn't have had, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everything. Yeah. Because every time something's happened, we've seen the network go into complete and total meltdown mode or the production companies go into full, all hands on deck. And yeah, they're like, this is gold. Right. So I'm on events, but with the, with the uh, Watch What Happens Live thing, I think everyone's seeing what they want to see. I don't know. That, I mean, that, oh, I don't know. I mean, granted, you're there, so you know what you're doing. First of all, what is Morgan even doing standing next to you if you, I mean, like, she's playing into this. And by the way, I also think. By the way, think, not shocking. These are very media savvy women. Yeah. Mind you, Mauricio's new season of Buying Beverly Hills on Netflix, just the trailer just dropped, and. They're talking about it on there, him and the daughter. So now we're going to have a whole nother. So wait, we're going to have everyone's going to go over there now to see if we can find anything out. I mean, look, I don't think it's all a setup, but you mean to tell me, I mean, Kyle still wants Mauricio to make lots of money and vice versa. And it's kind of like a win-win for everyone, no? I don't think it's a setup per se. I think it's everyone plays into the narrative. Everyone plays into their... And by the way, is this really bad for Dorit, who doesn't necessarily have the most interesting storyline? But now we're talking about her. Yeah. And then Garcelle jumped in. And it's kind of like next season. I mean, is Dorit definitely coming back? I'm not sure of that. Well, she's fighting with Kyle. That's not a bad thing for her future on the show. No, that's a great thing for her future. But just when you think certain housewives have gone the way of the dodo... They pop up again. They do pop up some more than others these days. And Brandy has popped up again. Yes. With all sorts of crazy. All sorts of crazy allegations, denials, finger pointing. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. The, the, right, so she, you know, Caroline Manzo is going after Bravo and the production company and saying this happened on Girls Trip, which... Will remind people what happened. Yeah, I mean, she's saying, you know, like, Brandy was, like, basically sexually harassed her and that they were in the bathroom and Brandy... I mean, lots of things leading up to that, and she basically, like, forced herself on Caroline. Which is actually sexual assault. Sexual assault, I think Not that's, harassment. Yes, correct. And I think she's claiming sexual assault against Bravo, against... The production company, Shed Media, and Warner Brothers, the parent company. So she's well, filed Brandy. a lawsuit. Yeah, but Brandy's not named because, I mean, she's saying she did, but she's not named in the lawsuit. Which is interesting, I guess, but does she have a separate lawsuit against no, Brandy? she's just, I don't think Brandy has what they say, deep pockets. True. I mean, that's just my nice way of saying I think she's having some financial issues. No offense. But Brandy's denying the whole thing. She is. But wasn't there a situation where they've already gone through this with a waiter? That is something totally separate, yes. And he is also suing and saying that Brandy did this and he felt uncomfortable. And I, but I, I don't even, I don't know if he's actually suing Brandy either. He might be. But I think he's suing the production company in Bravo, too. But are we seeing Everyone a, wants pa- a pattern of behavior? Uh, yes. Like, this isn't good. 
Right? It, it, I mean, right? There's a lot. It seems like there's a lot lately, right? Well, there's always With housewives. a lot. There's always a lot. But we have the same sort of characters popping up left, right, and center. Because just when you thought it had nothing to do with her, Bethany's now jumped into this whole thing. That's who I thought is, you were going to mention before. Right, which is hilarious to me because what was the last time Bethany was on Housewives? For someone who's over it, she is talking a lot about Housewives. And she also doesn't really, like, do her research. Like, she was outraged the other day. Outraged that, like, Dorit and Bravo would leak these texts. But it's not. Bravo didn't leak them. It's not on the show. So I think Bethany thinks that they were on the show. And she's like, and Kyle's their favorite. And if they treat her like this, I mean, she just wants well, to Well, first of all, Kyle it. is their favorite. They love Kyle. Kyle is the star of yeah. the show. For years and years and years and years and years. Yes. Kyle is the one. Yeah. So, of course, they're not going to do anything to upset Kyle. But with Bethany, who was their superstar and still is very much in the discussion about Housewives, suddenly now she's jumping in and complaining about Kyle being protected, which is so weird because... Uh, Bethany's whole thing has been about protecting these women on in the show. Are you saying Bethany contradicts herself? I am not saying that at all. I will not say anything negative about Bethany because A, she's always been lovely to be to me, and B, she scares me. Yeah, she's a little scary. She's a little scary. Yeah. You don't want her coming after you. No. But I have no reason to not like her. But I do think, and she's very smart. She's very smart. Bethany is probably the smartest housewife to come through that show. She's She knows what she's doing. So somehow she's now inserted herself into not only the Brandy thing, she's inserted herself into the Kyle Maurizio storyline. Yeah. And she feels it's so inappropriate to leak these texts. But again, like you said, the network didn't leak them. Dorit leaked them. Right. So, so I don't she think... mad at Dorit? Yes. Okay. So she's she's, mad, mad, at she's Dorit. mad at Dorit, too. She's mad at the network. I think she doesn't realize the network didn't leak them. I think it's just another excuse for her to jump on Bravo and, like, how dare they do this to someone in their most vulnerable moment. It's really Dorit. So just, you know, a little fact-checking Bethany Frankel. I'm not coming for her either because we don't want Bethany upset with me either. And she hates Bravo. She hates... Yes. Hates the production company, but there is one person she hates most of all, Andy. Yes. And her lawyers have now sent another letter. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, it's the same lawyers that are the reality reckoning lawyers. So I don't know. Like, when I read... So, like, Brandy was accusing Andy of sexual harassment. He apologized. Wait, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. Pause. So, Brandy's been twice now accused of sexual harassment, and now she's pointing and saying, but Andy sexually harassed me. Now, I'm just going to point yes. out something. Point it out. In case nobody's noticed. Andy's gay. Uh, really? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you and for that. I don't think there is any question. I do not believe Andy is bisexual. No. I do not believe Andy has any interest at all in women, except maybe about fashion. I would agree with that. Oh, and he likes skincare products. And, you know, he likes his friend Kelly Ripa. Yeah, I mean, he has his girlfriend. Yes. But I think never once, no matter how much anyone's had to drink, he would ever be like, no, dive in. No. No. I, I, I would agree with that. I would like to know if he'd ever been with a woman. I think he said that he hasn't. I feel like he said that somewhere, that he was a gold star gay. You know that term, don't you? No, what's that oh, term? Oh, gold star gay. It means you have never slept with a woman. I don't know if it applies to, like, fooling around, but I think it, gold star gay definitely means you've never slept with a woman. But don't you think it's a... I think he's a gold star. But I'm saying, but don't you think a lot of, depending on where they're from, a lot of men who are gay sometimes feel like they're trying to be straight, to yeah. get in... And, and then sleep with women, yes. Right, or at least, like, <laughs> make out or yeah. something like that. You know what, Melissa? Some of them go and get married and oh, spend 10 years here's... married to them. And... Oh, yeah. That's a, that yes. is a whole separate topic about... And in a lot of ways, you, a lot of times people say, like, oh, that's horrible. How could they do that to their wives? 
I actually feel bad a lot of the times because they're so unhappy and not honoring who they are that they feel like they have to live this whole separate life yeah. that then completely destroys a family or can destroy it. You look at like, but you look at like Peter Jacobson and Fran Drescher, they're like best friends. Exactly. Which I don't know how that happens. I think, well, if you and I were both... married for 10 years and I said, Melissa, I'm gay. I would say, oh, I'm shocked. You would say, no kidding. That's why I married you. We've had such a great time together. Well, have you seen these things on like Instagram and TikTok about these people who are literally coming out and saying, I'm gay, I'm gay, or I'm gay, and I'm straight, but we're married and we're best friends? No. You haven't seen these? Oh, I've seen like a whole handful of them. It's very interesting. And they, they talk about why it works because it's really about companionship and loving someone and having someone there for you did they get married knowing this like yes. oh so just yes. like we live in a nice house and yes. you have your bedroom i met exactly I mean, and it's not horrible no it's and they are like we are genuinely emotionally in love with each other we're just not physically attracted now granted i don't see it he's ever seen that and just like having you're my friends. I'm at your house today. But it does for a lot of people. It has to do with like insurance. It has to do with benefits. It has to do That's with all true. these different, um, really boring reasons. Okay, so you get some benefits out of it. Okay, listen. If the house is big enough and you each have your own separate area, you know what? Kyle and Mauricio are going to find out. I mean, they are finding out. Well, Not- they also have an enormous house. They are living separate lives. But don't. And we'll go back to Bethany. Don't you think? Men. Okay, first of all, are you a gold star gay? Yeah. I mean, oh. I have a girlfriend. Yeah, I am a gold star gay. I had a girlfriend. Did you ever make out with her? Well, yeah, I had a girlfriend in high so school. You're... We fooled around ish, but I think it only applies to how did you actually close the deal and sleep with each other? If you didn't, you're a gold star. I think you are making the lines fuzzy just because you like pulled shiny things. No, that's not. That's <laughs> not. I mean, that's not. I mean, my watch is rose gold, but that's, <laughs> that's a whole other story. I'm not a, a yellow gold star. I'm a rose gold. A rose gold. gold. No, I think, but I really think it's you have to sleep with them. And if you don't, I think you're still considered a gold star. I don't think kissing counts. Your secret's safe with me. A little fooling around here and there, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think Andy's a gold star also. So you see, Andy and I have that in common. We'll have to match you two. I up. mean, I think I'm about... 30 years too old for Andy? Probably. But so, but what is it like? I don't think Maurizio has a real problem with Kyle being with Morgan because men in general don't have a problem with women women having affairs with other women. And I'm, I'm speaking oh, in very broad that. terms. I could see that. I mean, he's coming, you know, he did a video the other day where he's like, here, I'd like to say this to all the paparazzi. Mind oh, you, yeah, he went like this. Yeah. I mean, mind you, and then he had another video where he's like playing like hard rock music and working out. Like, I'm like, oh, is this why people think Mauricio's hot? Because the boot's looking pretty good. He's not really my, I don't lust after him as much as most of the Bravo audience does, but he was looking decent. Mind you, again, buying Beverly Hills is about to come back on Netflix. Again, everything is so thought out. Yeah. You know, it's like the Kardashians where nothing happens by accident. It's just like... There's like a playbook. There's a playbook. It's just like the paparazzi and media have been covering your life night and day for about nine months. All of a sudden, you want to do a post and say this is your message and you're flipping them the bird. I just think, okay, well, your new show is starting like in two weeks. It's calculated, which is fine, right? Shocking. Okay, Shocking. but we have to go back to Bethany and Andy yeah. and Garagos, the lawyer, the law firm, suddenly coming out and really getting aggressive. It sounds personal, right? So, like, I mean, Brandy's accusing Andy of, like, it's, it's my whole thing is why? Like, again, he's a gold star gay. Why is he going to set Wizzy? We're going to walk in and go, rah, rah, you know? Apparently, I mean, his response. Apology. I mean, he mentions, I think it was him and Kate Chastain sent her this video of like, I'm going to quote unquote sleep with Kate tonight. Right. It's never going to happen. And Kate's, you know, fun like Brandy. And it's like, you know, and she's, yeah, and we want you to watch. Right. It's obviously a joke. Clearly a joke. Which is what he said. When, But I just don't know why. 
Like, what is her motivation? Like, yes, you're mentioning this thing with Caroline. Your time at the network is over with, regardless of this. But maybe not. Do. You don't think? Again, it's all clickbait and ratings and... You think there's a place... Now we want to see her fight with Andy. Well, he apologized and said, yeah, you know... Yeah, basically said... It was a joke and I apologize. And then, right, her lawyers responded in response to me, yes... To me, this sounded like Bethany was sitting there writing this. You know, they were, like, demanding he get terminated, demanding, they said, NBC, your legacy depends on this. They said, how could someone be so above the law like Andy? They said, we understand now you've given someone so much power. They're behind the camera. They put themselves as the star of their own production. They hold this national conference, obviously referring to BravoCon, where they decide to host the thing. That makes million, you know, it sounded really, and they just said, we, we demand, and they said, by the way, he basically admitted there's a video, the mere definition of sexual harassment is your boss saying, I want to have a threesome. They have some valid points in there. They're very, again, they're it's good. they get into a lot of trouble is there's a difference between intent and reality of what it says. And very often, and, but that's all over the world now. That's one of our legacies of over being overly woke is intent versus the reality and they're saying like intent doesn't matter like right. the definition of sexual harassment is exactly when you're involved and like if you do think of it in a corporate setting okay you have a point right but again this isn't a corporate setting it's not a and they really just it's that, to me, seems like Bethany was sitting in the other room. Just going know, like can't. this. Right? I mean, it seems so personal. Like, what's, Oh, it's personal. What's your play? Like, if you want money, right, you, you wouldn't even be here. You would just say to Andy, we're going public with this. Right. Give us money. But, no, Andy's untouchable. You and I have talked about that. I don't think anyone is going to take down Andy. And most, I've gotten, I cannot tell you how many calls I've gotten from Housewives. And people on Bravo, but mostly housewives, past and present, when this happened, you know, just like, oh, my God. Yeah, everyone agrees. Everyone now, after like an hour, they're like, no, this was going nowhere. That's the consensus based on, I don't ask for these things. My phone just rings. And I'm I like, don't ask. Who is it? I'm like, who is it now? Okay, well, let's hear your opinion. Great. Can't use any of this on the podcast. <laughs> I mean, you want to say this. Oh, God forbid we say this in public. But the majority is... Yeah, most people are like, this is this is just going away. No, and but as, as, and if they did get rid of him, it would cost them so much money. I don't know if you read this morning. It, yeah. Don Lemon is being paid out the remainder of his contract for like twenty four something million. I would love to get fired for twenty four million. I would do that in. A heartbeat. I say this all the time. One second. Chris Chris Hansen, too, from The Bachelor, $25 million. I see Don Lemon. You know, he's he's Friday night in Bridgehampton. Almon is gay night. I don't know if you know this. You haven't been in the Hamptons a long time. I see Don Lemon and Andy. But I see Don Lemon every Friday night. He is living his best life in the Hamptons all summer with his husband. You know, I don't think he cares no but I was, he wants to do something i guess I well don't know i'm why. sure he wants to do something and they think he feels like his reputation was tarnished and i'm sure he's frustrated because he really loved what he did yeah so i think there's a lot of frustration there that you're not getting to do what you love to do but 24 million makes it sting a little bit less yeah i mean can't you I, honestly he should have a podcast i believe he does Oh, well, there you go. There you go. That is where the P... I mean, Chris Hansen has a podcast. That's where you I've go if you're Chris canceled. I've had Chris Hansen on. Oh, well, there you go. He's lovely. He's fascinating. If you're canceled, just start your podcast and do it your own way. Exactly. So... Yes. Other things I've been thinking about. Tell me. Travis and Taylor. There's been a little bit of a kerfuffle, which leads back to... Bethany. All roads seem to lead to Bethany. Always. Well, Bethany, she just likes, it's like with the Kardashians, it's like she wants a reaction. If you're going to talk about the Kardashians, you know people are going to react. Yeah, she's been talking a lot about Travis and Taylor, just saying it's all because of the Super Bowl when he stood up to that ref. I know you know the ref's name. No, he stood up, he yelled at his coach. Oh, coach. Andy Reid, and I don't know if the shoulder bump was intentional, but he went off. 
And listen, a lot of people had a lot of reactions. Well, apparently Bethany did too, and she has this whole thing about he's a peacock and Taylor's a peacock. Now, of course, she relates it back to herself once she dated a peacock and it didn't work out because she's a peacock. So she's now convinced that Taylor, in fall, so she thinks that's very inappropriate of Travis to have done that, but she thinks that they're not going to work out because they're both grandstanders, which she calls a peacock. And his father basically said, like, who the fuck is this troll? And I was like, like no that. clue who Bethany no Frankel clue. was at no all, which is maybe the biggest insult. And it's kind of funny he's calling her a troll. Yeah. And yeah. that's kind of funny. But, okay, need to unpack this a little bit. Yes. What Travis did with Andy Reid at the Super Bowl was completely wrong. Should he have screamed in Andy Reid's face? 100%. Absolutely not. Should be fined. Should be benched by the team. So beyond inappropriate, but it's the Super Bowl. Emotions so they keep him in. And, but I have to say, my son's an athlete. And here is this, I'm not going to say he's ever mild-mannered, but here's this kid who's sweet and funny, and he gets on the field, and I don't recognize the person. And the same goes with his friends. So to judge someone's full-on personality by their actions on the field when you're a professional and in the Super Bowl is a little harsh that you characterize them completely that way. I could see that, yeah. But in the meantime, which I didn't see and I'm just hearing about, was this big TMZ investigates Travis's past. Yeah, I mean... You gotta love Harvey Levin. Like God they see him. what could get to the clicks. I mean, I know like my friend Patty Stanger was on it. I think they are talking about like his relationship history and his ex. I mean, his ex girlfriend is. I mean, they were together. I know five years, but she she talks a lot to the media. Like, which she wouldn't be if he wasn't with Taylor Swift, right? Like that's yeah. why we're so interested. Well, that's why we're so interested. Would she have talked because he his profile was coming up anyway? Probably. And one of the things she talks about is he cheated. And like I said, a professional athlete accused of cheating is not a big story. I mean, not to make a bad joke, but call Chloe. Yeah. Call, call, call Chloe. He call just, Chloe. Like, just she leave will tell it you that. all about it. Yeah. So I'm not sure. But, you know, and, and then someone said that Dr. Phil is on it. I don't know how. I mean, yeah. I mean, at one point you want to say, guys... Leave them alone. Now, they're also both flaunting their relationship in front of everybody. And I think that's why a lot of people thought it was fake. Because she's never behaved that way. But I think she's in love. You do. I think she's living out her teenage dream. Remember, she wasn't popular in high school. She's, She's the head cheerleader. He's the quarterback. I personally think that... Taylor is living out her her high school fantasy. She was working all the way through high school. She wasn't popular. She's now the head cheerleader. He's the famous football player. It's clearly a lot of chemistry going on there. And that's why I think she's so open. I think it's probably everything she ever dreamed or thought she wanted is happening. You think this is it? I, I think this is it. Because he seems in love, too. Oh, he seems wildly in love, but she's the most famous woman in the world, and she's pretty, and she's talented, and she's rich. And I also think that they must be having crazy sex. Because you know, if you look at all of her ex-boyfriends, they're very much, what did someone say? They look like Victorian children you know, like John with, Mayer with tuberculosis. I'm not talking about John Mayer, but they're all oh. those skinny that you know he is hurling her around the bedroom. Probably, you know. I actually, believe it or not, since we're saying I'm a gold star gay, I don't find him. He's not really. I don't get it. I, I know mean, I'm gonna. Be, this is shocking. No, I, mean, I just don't get it. Really, the charm, the personality, he's sweet. the success, the humor. You know, I am completely obsessed with his brother. And his sister-in-law, like, to me, like, one of the greatest moments was when Jason Kelsey was picked one of the sexiest men of the year by People Magazine. Interesting choice. You know, they're they're at 
they're both in a peak moment and it's literally just explosive. And you know what? I hope she's happy. She's worked her ass off her whole life. Yeah, and I do think like And by the way, so is he. He has. Okay, I see that. You don't get to be in the NFL and a major superstar by not working every single day. What, yes. Well, maybe after this, if this era's tour ever, and I don't think it's ever going to end. No. But if it ever does end, look, I do think they both have small town values, like in a good yes. way. Like I think really at the end of the day, they're about her cats and the kids. And like, I think they would be happy like living outside of Hollywood. At least right now. Yeah. In the middle of, I don't know where, I, I forgot where I he's think, from. But it would be interesting to see, you know, we will we'll see if it happens. Um, which will be fascinating because one of my favorite things I've heard was there was a picture of them walking down the street and someone said, oh, look, Taylor's taking her new album out for a walk, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. It is hilarious. But you know what? What? How great would it be? I mean, she does have a new album coming out. Right. But I think a lot of that is about the ex still. Well, I think the fact that her work ethic that she managed to Record an album while doing the Eras tour speaks volumes. It's volumes. But imagine that after the next album, which I assume we're going to take a minute off from the tour, maybe the one after that will just be out of nowhere, a love album, right? Like, Because, I mean, isn't that where we're going? Like, it'll be a whole different album for her, which is not a bad career move. No, it's going to be, you know, again, I think we're all getting oversaturated. But my favorite is the one thing Travis cannot make go away was that horrific show on E! Catching Kelsey, like where they were trying to set him up and it was like a dating show. Yes. You know. Yes. I mean, did anyone watch that show? Well, they didn't bring it back for season two. No. I barely remember that show. Oh, yeah. It was... I forgot it until you just mentioned it. It was... It, it's a highlight for me in one of the worst shows that's been put on the air in the last decade. You know what was really bad for me also is The Abbey. Do you know, yeah, do you remember I remember that? The Abbey. Yeah, that I mean, wasn't it was good. literally, it was like Vanderpump Rules before its time. Yeah. And they would have like, it was the people that worked at The Abbey. Great concept. Conceptually fantastic. Poorly executed. Poorly executed. That didn't really go so far. Okay, thinking, seeing things that are new on TV. And I still cannot believe you have not seen the whole thing. The Wendy Williams oh. documentary. Everyone's talking about it. I saw it. So tell me, tell me, tell me what you witnessed. I saw a little bit and I saw clips. You know, it's really sad because I, I want to say knew her, but she's still alive. Um, you were on the show a lot, right? As was my mother. And in the professional setting, she was lovely. She was good at her job. She did come to a few parties at my mom's after my mother passed away. She could not have been more generous with her time with me. Never was like, don't care about you anymore. So I'm finding it so disturbing. But if I take myself out of it, because I look at it personally going like, all this was going on right under everybody's nose. Right. But when I take myself out of it, knowing what I know, it's tragic it is so upsetting and so disturbing and so powerful you sit there with your mouth open really yeah it's crazy because you basically watch someone who's already teetering on the break fully descend into and I know it's dementia and aphasia and alcohol you watch someone's descent into madness how I mean are you so are you shocked then knowing her I don't think again I went and did the Wendy show when it was still the Wendy show with Sherry and know a lot of people that worked on it and also being an insider in television, you know how to read the room. And we all have access to information that we can also just sort of extrapolate from what's happening, that we all know 
Mm, we also know how to read newspapers and this and like, oh, she's in rehab or mm, she's in a wellness center. And we all kind of know it before we're told it. What do you think? Well, I mean, you, you, I've, I mean, I didn't know her as well as you, but I, you heard things, right? Like even before all of this. So you heard stuff all the time. I just don't know how was this made. I'm so confused. Like, is it her? Like, how was, I mean, I know, so it's like dementia. And so, but like, how did she, like, is she aware that she's participating in something that the whole world is now watching? Well, it's shot over the course of a couple of years. And what's interesting to me is it says from executive producer Wendy Williams. And it was supposed to be charting her comeback. But boy, oh boy, does it take a dark turn again which I'm so excited about I'm going to be interviewing the filmmakers so all these kind of burning questions we're going to get into you have to ask them all of this oh I have such a long list that my number one question is like how how like how was this made I just maybe I'm too Big picture, but right, I they just... They take a camera, I mean, and they, yes. follow, they put a microphone on people, and they follow them around. I just... The access, though. Like, who is it? Yeah, I'm just curious. So there you go. I'll could let you, you, you know how it that? goes. I can't... I, okay. Again, I'm very excited to talk to them to find out all the ins and outs of so much of it. Yeah, this is... People are talking about this. It's crazy. And like, you people and I are always, talking about this. You and I always have so much to talk about. Oh, my God. We're going to have so much the next time, too. I know. Always. I mean, we need to do these more often because just so much ground to cover. Seriously. What do you want to know about me? I got nothing going on. I know. I mean, I'm a gold star gay. Let me see. What, what can I You're a gold you? star gay. Um, what am I? I mean, well, you'll have to eventually tell us about your wedding oh, and I mean, your year. plans. And, that's okay, a so year it's a year away. That's a year away. Can't even start to get my head wrapped around Okay, that. well... Then you're interviewing these people. I'm interviewing these people. Um, God, that's all your this dogs thing. just went for a walk. My dogs got a bad <laughs> things going on. I got things going on. Yeah, I mean, fascinating. Listen, I'm thrilled to have nothing going on sometimes, right? I not, nothing is bad for me. Is it? Yeah, nothing. Nothing is bad for me. Like just this whole day or two of just sleeping. I like that Would if that I feel nice? like I deserve it, but I rarely feel like I deserve I, it. I never feel Again, like I deserve it. you and it. the therapist. Okay, on that note. Thank you so much for joining us, David. Our crossover behind the velvet rope in Melissa Rivers' group text podcast. We're going to have to do this in person again. Absolutely. So fun. Love you much.